inventories. In this reading, we will talk about the cost of inventories, inventory valuation methods, measurement of inventory value, presentation and disclosure, and finally, evaluation of inventory management. As we have discussed before, inventory is shown as a current asset on the balance sheet. For manufacturing and merchandising companies, revenue and profit is generated through the sale of inventory. And for many companies, inventory represents a significant asset. With regards to inventory accounting, there are a few important differences between IFRS and US GAAP and those differences will be highlighted in this reading. Cost of inventories. Capitalizing inventory related costs defers their recognition as an expense. We have talked about this in earlier readings, but I will explain again what we mean by this because the concept is extremely important. Let's say that a company either builds or purchases inventory in period one, and then this material is sold in period two. Given that the inventory is sold in period two, it makes sense for the expense to also be recognized in period two. So if the money is spent on inventory in period one, how do we make sure that the expense is shown in period two? The way we do that is by creating an asset called inventory. This is called capitalizing inventory cost. So if you spent dollars 10 on creating a piece of inventory, then in period one, we create an asset called inventory worth 10. And then when this particular asset is sold in period two, that is where we remove the $10 from the balance sheet and show it as a $10 expense on the income statement. That expense is called the cost of goods sold or cost of sales. In this particular section, we will get one level deeper and ask the question, which costs are capitalized and which costs are expensed? And the answer is given right here. When you create inventory or purchase inventory, the following costs are capitalized. And again, capitalized means that we create an asset on the balance sheet. The cost of purchases. So if you are purchasing raw material, the cost of raw material needs to be capitalized. So if raw material for a given item is worth $3, that is capitalized. The cost of conversion, so converting the raw material into the finished product, let's say that cost is four, that also needs to be capitalized. The cost of conversion can have several components. For example, direct labor, which is the labor that is directly involved in converting the raw material into the finished good. You might have direct overhead, so factory related expenses that can be directly connected to the inventory and then material which we have already talked about in terms of raw material. The cost necessary to bring inventory to its present location and condition. So if you are creating inventory and then you need to put that inventory in a particular showroom which is the location from where you make your sales, the cost of taking the inventory to the showroom is also capitalized. However, any cost associated with shipping from the showroom to your customer is not capitalized. In terms of transportation cost, the, the cost of transporting raw material is also capitalized. Period costs are expensed in the period where they are incurred. If while creating inventory, there is some abnormal wastage of materials, then the associated raw material cost, labor overhead is all expensed. The larger thought behind this is as follows. The definition of an asset is something that will give you a future benefit. If you are creating tables or chairs and because of some defect, you have to scrap 
a hundred tables, then all the cost associated with those wasted tables has to be expensed because there is not going to be any future benefit of those tables. Storage costs need to be expensed and the logic is fairly straightforward. If you started capitalizing storage costs, then that would mean the value of the inventory would keep going up the longer you store inventory. So again, storage costs are expensed. Any administrative overheads are expensed and selling costs are expensed. As discussed earlier, selling costs might include the cost of transporting goods to your customer. Let's consider a simple example. This company manufactures high-end tractors. The inventory related costs are shown below. Raw material, direct labor, etc. What value of inventory is recorded? Essentially, this question is asking which of these costs need to be capitalized. And obviously, what is not capitalized will be expensed. Raw material is directly tied to the product, so this needs to be capitalized. Direct labor, 40,000, this is capitalized. Abnormal wastage, let's say that one or two of your tractors are defective and need to be scrapped. So that cost is expensed. We are assuming here that this abnormal wastage cost is not already covered over here transportation of raw materials this is capitalized and storage of finished product this is also expensed so our value that is recorded is going to be 56 plus 40 plus 10 which is 106,000. coming now to inventory valuation methods here are the different methods we'll talk about specific identification, FIFO, weighted average cost, last in, first out. Before getting into the details, I will quickly set the context. Say you are a trading company, you buy your goods, you store them, and then you sell. Let's say that when you buy, the buying price is not always the same. You buy an initial batch where each item is worth $1. And then maybe you buy a second batch where the cost of each item is 1.5. Now, if you sell two items, the question is, what cost should you use for each item being sold? The different possibilities include using the last price or the most recent price, or you could use a older price, or you could use an average price. Now, the decision that we make depends on which valuation method is being used. Let's start with the method called specific identification. This method is used for inventory items that are unique in nature and not ordinarily interchangeable. This method allows for cost of sales and ending inventory to reflect actual costs incurred. So if you sell jewelry, then obviously you would keep track of every item in your inventory individually. So this particular ring will have a particular cost. You will have this ring tagged with a particular ID. And then when this particular ring is sold, the cost would be the cost of this particular ring. So this method is specific identification. And as you can see, this method would apply where the cost of inventory is high and also where the items are not ordinarily interchangeable. Another inventory valuation method is first in, first out or FIFO for short. This assumes that the oldest goods purchased or manufactured are sold first and the newest goods purchased or manufactured remain in inventory. Let's understand this through a simple example. In period one, you buy two pencils for $1 each, and then you buy another two for $2 each. So initially your inventory looks like this, four pencils, you bought two of them for $1 each, and then you bought another two for $2 each. 
before you start selling this is your inventory you then sell two pencils in period one under the first in first out approach you will sell the two pencils that you bought first for one dollar now with this method what is the cost of goods sold for period one let's say that those two pencils which you purchased for one dollar each were sold in period one notice the cost of goods sold is going to be two dollars why because each of those items was for one dollar and then the inventory at the end of period one would be your two pencils which are each worth two dollars so your inventory at the end of period one is four dollars notice that with first in first out these two items were sold first these are the items that you bought first and you are left with the two items that are two dollars each then in period two you sell these two so the cogs is two times two which is four and the inventory at the end of period two is zero a very basic point over here while it seems like we are selling the particular item that we bought for dollar one and then the particular item that we bought for dollar two but in reality we are not exactly tagging each item and selling the item that we bought first this is simply a method of allocating the cost so when you have four pencils they are sitting in in inventory they are all the same it's only in your costing system that you keep track of the fact that the first two items that are being sold are the items that have a cost of one dollar and, and the second two items have a cost of two dollars last in first out this method assumes that the newest goods purchased are sold first and the oldest goods purchased or manufactured including beginning inventory remain in ending inventory this method is allowed under us gap it is not allowed under ifrs continuing with the same example in period one you buy two pencils for one dollar each and then again two pencils for two dollars each so this is your inventory at the start now in period one you sell two pencils the question is what is the cost associated with the two pencils that you sell in period one with last in first out or lifo these are the two items that are sold first so the cogs now for period one is going to be four ending inventory consists of the items that you purchased for dollar one so the ending inventory is two in period two you sell these two items so the cogs is two dollars and the inventory at the end of period two is zero weighted average cost this method assigns the average cost of goods available for sale during the accounting period to the units that are sold as well as to the units in ending inventory the simple formula that you can try to remember is as follows weighted average cost is total cost of units available for sale divided by the total units available for sale if we consider the same example and calculate the period one cogs now notice before you come to period one cogs you have to come up with weighted average cost this is the total cost of units available for sale remember you bought goods for one dollar one dollar two dollars two dollars so the total cost was six divided by the units available for sale which was four so your weighted average cost is 1.5 per unit in period one you sold two items so the cogs is three inventory is two at the end of period one so again the ending inventory is three period two cogs is also three and inventory at the end of period two is zero this table summarizes what we have been talking about and adds a gross profit element assume that each item was sold for five dollars as we've already discussed with fifo the cogs is two and then in period one if you sell every item for five dollars that means your sales 
were 10 and the gross profit would be 8. What you can do is pause the video over here and just make sure that you understand all these numbers. These numbers are essentially based on what we have just discussed. And then do example 2 in the curriculum. It's a slightly long example but really illustrates the points that we are talking about here very well. Try to solve this problem now and pause the video. Come up with your answer before you look at the solution. Here is what you should come up with. The in ending inventory should be 125. That's the number of units times 325, which was your price at which you bought the second batch. Periodic versus perpetual inventory systems. In a periodic system, a company determines the quantity of inventory on hand periodically and hence it is necessary to maintain a purchases account. With a periodic system, the ending inventory is determined through a physical count. So if this is period 1, this is period 2, then typically there is a physical count at the end of every period and that determines the inventory balance on those dates. Again, those dates tend to be beginning of period or end of period dates. During a given period, a purchases account is maintained which tracks how much is being purchased and then the cost of goods sold for a given period would be equal to the beginning inventory. So let's say beginning inventory is 10 and then purchases during a period let's say are 50. Ending inventory let's say is 20 then your cost of goods sold is going to be beginning inventory 10 plus 50 which is 60 minus 20 which is 40. So notice that you compute COGS using the inventory values as well as the purchases over the period. With a perpetual system changes in inventory and COGS are continuously updated and that is the critical difference between a perpetual system and a periodic system. Typically companies that use computer systems such as SAP would have a perpetual system. Connecting periodic and perpetual systems with what we have discussed earlier. If a company uses specific identification or FIFO, then periodic and perpetual systems give the same values for COGS and ending inventory. On the other hand, if a company uses LIFO or weighted average cost, then the choice of system, i.e. periodic or perpetual, might impact values for COGS and ending inventory. From an exam perspective, simply knowing what you see over here should generally be enough. But if you really want to understand this material very well, then I would encourage you to do example 3 in the curriculum. This example builds on the earlier example in the curriculum and focuses on the difference between a periodic system and a perpetual system. This slide is extremely important from an exam perspective and it deals with the comparison of inventory valuation methods. Very often on the exam, there might be a question that talks about two companies A and B where they, these two companies are very similar. One uses LIFO, so this might be a US based company and company B uses FIFO. And you need to recognize that simply because these companies use different inventory valuation methods, they are going to have different numbers reported on the balance sheet and income statement. In an environment where we have rising prices and stable inventory, the COGS is going to be higher with the LIFO firm. You have seen this in our earlier examples but I'll tell you a quick way of remembering this. Just look at rising prices, stable inventory and connect with the example that we talked about. Put in 1122, this represents what you paid for your inventory. With last in, first out, 
essentially what you are doing is selling the items that you bought last if you sell these two that means the cogs is going to be high and obviously then fifo is going to be low these top three items are from the income statement if cogs is high that means that your expenses are high which means that your profit before tax is low and hence taxes will be low similarly your earnings before tax and earnings after tax are going to be low because the cost is high for fifo you are always going to have the opposite of lifo inventory balance with lifo is going to be low because remember you are selling the two two and you are left with one one which gives you a lower inventory balance current asset minus current liability this is your working capital this is going to be low under lifo because current liabilities are not impacted by the method that you use current assets are if current assets are lower that means working capital would be lower and note that this then would impact your ratios like the current ratio this is extremely important the cash flow after tax will be higher with lifo the reason is that tax which is a actual cash flow is lower with lifo since the tax is lower therefore the cash flow is higher us gap companies which have a choice between lifo and fifo will invariably choose lifo because with lifo they pay lower taxes and hence have higher cash flow as a general point the numbers for weighted average cost will be between lifo and fifo so if you get a question on the exam comparing lifo with weighted average cost what you can simply do is think of this table and just remember the fact that lifo is going to have a cogs that's higher than weighted average cost taxes that are lower and so on again that would be in a environment with rising prices and stable inventory on this slide i want to make another important remark using lifo gives us a better income statement and using fifo gives us a better balance sheet now let's make sure we understand this term better better in this context means a income statement that reflects the current economic reality when we use lifo we are saying that cost of goods sold is based on last in first out so the cost shown on your income statement is based on the current prices of 2 and 2 clearly that is more accurate than showing a cost on the income statement based on 1 and 1 on the other hand fifo is better for the balance sheet why because with fifo we are saying first in first out so these two items are shown on the income statement which compromises the quality of the income statement because on the income statement we are now showing a cost that is lower than the current value of inventory but on the balance sheet we are showing 2 and 2 which reflects the current value of inventory so again better means which method is better reflecting the current economic reality what you need to do now is fill out this table for falling prices and stable inventory pause the video before you see the answer here is what you should come up with and the shortcut method again is as follows falling prices and stable inventory so quickly put in the 2211 this means that you initially buy your inventory for $2 then for $1 with last in first out you are selling the $1 inventory first which means that your cogs is going to be low if cogs is low that means expense is low profit is high therefore taxes are high earnings before taxes and after taxes high the inventory balance we are left with these items so inventory balance is high working capital is high and cash flow is low